connect to Donald. My computer's not really up there. Yeah, it is. Marty will fix it for you. Get Marty up here. He's just press the button and we'll have it.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Goodwill to men or to men of goodwill. Interestingly enough, you will find that since the great controversy where there was war in heaven, and that war was brought down to earth, we have had this problem, this problem of alienation from God. And not a few weeks ago, we had a message called, God Reconciled to Man. And now we are looking at man being reconciled to God. There has been a great problem, has there not? This phrase in Luke 2, verse 13 through 14, has been recently translated, different from the authorized King James Version, and that puzzled me. Because you notice it says, Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. A little different from the way we memorized it, isn't it? And in the other version, it actually says, peace on earth to people he favors. Well, they looked at the Greek and they decided that that was a way that they could interpret that last part. The part that Brianna read so well and so beautifully, it says to us, Glory be to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. I have a little friend who, she went to special ed, actually, when she was younger. And she knows I love her, but she is one smart as a whip. I read those two verses to her, and she said, that doesn't seem the same. <laughs> doesn't seem the same to say that God is pleased, that he has offering peace and goodwill just to those with whom he is pleased, compared to goodwill toward men. Amen. So we're going to explore that a little bit. Young has a literal translation, and we'll look at that for just a second. Glory to God, and glory in the highest to God, and upon earth peace among men, goodwill. Interesting, that's a literal translation. When I think about the problem that this presents to me, it presents to me a problem about the character of God. What is God like? And so I thought we'd take a few Bible verses and delve into goodwill to men or to men of goodwill. Now, the defi dictionary definition of goodwill is as a kindly feeling of approval and support, benevolent interest or concern. The synonyms listed include benevolence, compassion, goodness, kindness, consideration, charity, cooperation, friendliness, thoughtfulness, and decency. That sounds like God to me. <laughs> All of that is goodwill. You know, if a husband and wife have a, a problem, and the husband believes that the wife has good will toward him, that'll mean that he interprets her motivation in the right way, right? Amen. Likewise, if a wife has a problem with her husband, and she believes he has good will toward her, she will interpret his actions in a different way. Amen. If she believes he has bad will toward her, boy, that's when the fire grows, right? Amen. So, having good will towards someone or something is so powerful. And it affects our mindset. It affects our worldview. And here we have Jesus, being, his birth being announced, good will to men. Well, I was reading and found out there were some other people that had a little problem with this as well. But they were from a different religious persuasion than I. And I found out that in 1971 they rewrote the Gloria, which is part of the Mass for the Catholic Church. 
And when they rewrote it, they um, put this version of the peace on earth to men of goodwill. You can see it up there in the Latin text of the Vulgate, Pax Omnibus Bone Voluntatis. Well, that is different. That's the different part, right? To men of goodwill. So this beautiful lady, bless her, Jennifer Gregory Miller, she writes in a blog. And I was reading about what she thought, and this is what she had to say. This way of thinking that we must cooperate to receive the peace is very different from the Protestant thinking. In fact, the King James Version translation of this passage is glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to men. That translation turns man's cooperation into what? Complete what? Receptivity. Complete what? Receiving. Complete receiving. We're not going to deny that there's cooperation in our, in our daily walk with God. But the beginner, the mover of this salvation is not you and me. The beginner and the mover of this salvation starts with whom? God. God. And that's what was so amazing about what those angels had to say that day. To me, that was always the most wonderful thing. The war is over, God's saying. He's saying, peace on earth, and I'm sending benevolence and kindness and friendliness to men on earth. Yeah. And that's what I heard when I thought about, because we sing this in the Messiah, you know. You know, you sing, and there was with an angel, you know, it goes like that, and then they go, Gloria, and it's, it's like, wow, what is God doing? He's making a, an announcement, a, a most wonderful announcement. So, so many times we just pass over it. So I got a question. How much goodwill do you have to have to receive God's peace? Is it on you? I mean, if you have this much, is it enough? Or do you need this much? And I used to go to a church where you could tell whether there was a revival by how high the people jumped. You know, and I always, at the end I thought, well, pastor, I mean, how high do we have to jump to get to, before you can say there's a revival? That's a little bit like this. How much goodwill do you have to have to receive God's peace? That's a question. Where, where is it coming from? Well... Let's look at this, a couple, another, another question. How good do you have to be, be to receive God's goodwill? This is interesting, isn't it? Because we can think about before our conversion, we can think about after our conversion, we can think about our justification, and we can think about our sanctification walk, but I want to just go to the scriptures. Amen. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 Amen. says, But God demonstrated His own love toward us, and that while we were, you finish it with me, we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So how much good did I bring to the table? None. Zip. Zero. Who said that? Uh, a zero with the, with, the, with the edges rubbed out? That's nothing. We bring nothing to the table except our sinful souls. Go ahead, Brother Ruben. We don't have anything to bring. We don't have anything to bring. We don't have anything to bring. So while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Praise and this includes, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 through 23, this includes you who were once far away from God. How many, many of us have been far away from God? If you're a child, you, you may not feel like you've been far away from God, but give me a hand. Have you ever been far away from God? Yes. And God brought you back? Yes. You were His enemies. We were his enemies when we were far away from God. We were separated from him by what? Say it with me. Evil thoughts and actions. Yeah, that's where we were. So we were enemies with God when he did what for us? Romans, going back to Romans, for, uh, chapter 5, verse 10 through 11, it says, For since our friendship with God was restored by what? The death of his son... After we were, before we were enemies, no, while we were still his what? Enemies. 
we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God. Because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends with who? With God. Woo! Aren't you glad to be able to count Jesus as one of your friends? Jesus says, I, I, I've revealed this to you, uh, Marty, that's one of your favorite verses. What did he say? He said, um, a master doesn't always let his servants know what's going on. But Jesus said, because you are my friends, I want to tell you what's going on. Oh, in the book of Revelation, he told us what's going on. In the book of Daniel, he told us what to expect. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends with God. Amen. I get so excited about this good news. Let me go backwards. Just one more. And then, okay. I think that's it. Oh, I think it went too far. Well, yes, let's just, there we are. Okay, now, we're going to go to Romans verse 1. This is the way that he started that chapter, if he was writing in chapters. He says, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by what? Faith in what? What do you have to have faith in? Faith in God that, that what happened? That Jesus' blood on the cross was sufficient for you. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. He said that to Paul. And he's saying that to us. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. What we did for ourselves? No. What Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us, and we are made right, set right, justified, set up right, by faith in what Jesus has done. Amen? Amen. By His faith. By His faith. And He walked His walk on this planet using His faith in the, and His experience of His relationship with His Father. Colossians 1, verse 19 and 23 says this, For God in, in His in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. Hallelujah. How much did he reconcile? Everything, everything to himself. He, he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. So here we have these angels standing there and they're giving this announcement. And Colossians tells us he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Colossians 1, 19-23, we're going to continue with verse 22. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Amen. What can wash away my sins? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that's the way we can stand before Him without a single fault. And that's where we get that boldness to come before the throne of God in our time of need. Not because of who we are, but because of what He has done. And when we know that He has purified us and cleansed us and is making us holy, because of what Jesus has done, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. But you must, there's a but. There's a but. Hmm. I thought he did it all. Here's our part. There is our part. You must continue to what? Believe. believe. Oh, what a powerful thing. What a powerful thing believing is. Believing in your heart will motivate all your actions, all your words, all your deeds. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. And that's what's so amazing. There's a transforming experience when you hear this good news that Jesus paid it all, that he has made peace with you, and that you don't have to be part of the great controversy anymore. You don't have to be on the devil's side anymore. God will do something for you. The good news, Paul said, 
has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. Romans 5, verse 17, and the last part says this, But even greater is God's wonderful grace and His gift of righteousness. The wages of sin is what? Yes. But the gift of God is what? Eternal. Eternal life. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and His gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over what? Sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Does God promise you victory because of what Jesus has done? Is God cleansing the sanctuary in heaven past the most in the most holy place? Are you the temple of God? Does the Holy Spirit dwell in you? Is the Holy Spirit working a day of atonement in your life? The Holy Spirit is working a day of atonement in my life. Because Christ's coming is soon. You know, that's a timeline from the gate going into the courtyard to the place where they offered the sacrifice to finally in the place of labor where there's baptism and then you go into the sanctuary, the holy place, and you have the bread and you have the light and you have the altar of incense, which is the prayers of God going up over the top of the temple making intercession for us. And Jesus now is in the most holy place, and there is a place between the two angels, which is called the mercy seat. The law of God is in that, in that box. And in that box, God has written his law, and he's writing it in our hearts. He's working out holiness in us. So we will have triumph over sin and death, not just death, through this one man, Jesus Christ. And all of this is a, a what? A gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. So you can share that, can't you? You can tell somebody, God has done it all. And all we know is that this war that started in heaven is trying to war on you. There is an Armageddon that will try to war on you, but God has given us the victory. I love this little image that I saw. It says reinforcements. You see those kind of angels? They're equipped. You may not see it well, but they've got swords. He says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Amen. God has sent angels to be our reinforcements. He's given us the Holy Spirit. And as we celebrate this Christmas season, I want you to remember this slide. The greatest gift was placed was not placed under a tree, but he was hung on a tree. So my word to you is please don't leave the very best gift under the tree. Lord Jesus offers you the salvation. He offers you a new life. You can be a new creature. And he's here in this place today to offer that to you. I want to ask everybody just to bow their heads, close their eyes, and fold your hands. This is a time I want to ask you in your heart, while every eye is closed and nobody's watching everybody else, is there something that you want to give to God? We have, you know, we don't bring Him anything, just as I am, but your heart. That's the only gift we have, our will, our, our desire to serve Him. So if you would like to do that, just raise your hand to between you and God. And uh, dear Lord, you hear us and you see us that we are asking you to take our hearts and keep them for us. And we believe that as we ask that, that you will do that and you are our King and be the King of our hearts. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, you know what? That gives us joy, doesn't it? Amen. So we're going to ask the congregation to all stand. And we're going to sing something that's on the back of your program. It's called Sing Joy. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Go ahead, stretch. Stand.